Dr. Luis Daniel Munez is next. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Dr. Luis Daniel Munoz, member of the state's equity council, resident of Pawtucket, candidate for governor, but here speaking as an individual. You know, I, for me, it's a, it's a matter of autonomy. You know, I don't see men up here having to argue whether they should have access to certain types of care or whether they have control over their bodies. And yet I see many more men up here saying what women should do with their bodies. You know, when we talk about autonomy, though, we have to look at a history of uh, inequality. How many people remain silent when sterilization programs are being run in this country, right? So this isn't just about abortion, though. Obviously, we're talking about coverage of abortion today. But when we get past autonomy and, and when we say that this is a right, which I would argue that not everyone here is saying that healthcare is a human right, though I believe that, and reproductive health is a human right. Let's start talking about you know, the fact that when we talk health justice, which is the implementation of health care, reinforcing that it's a human right. We don't see that across the board in Rhode Island or in this country. Women of color see disproportionately poor health outcomes. And overall, there have been people up here saying we're doing wordplay. Well, is it wordplay? Is it wordplay? Is justice ambiguous? Without access to coverage, there is no health justice. Without health justice, there is pervasive inequality. Without equality, Rhode Island does not stand ahead of other states. It stands far behind them. So I hope that you will pass the Equality and Abortion uh, Coverage Act. I hope that you will think about women of color. And I hope that you will think about the next seven generations, which is who I'm here fighting for. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Senator Rogers. Thank you, Chairwoman. We speak about rights. And, and, and again, I usually don't speak, especially on these topics. I listen a lot. Being a man, sometimes it's hard to come forward and say stuff, I get ostracized because I'm a man and not a woman. What do I know? Mm -hmm. But speaking, you say, you, you kept emphasizing rights. And, and I think you left out the, a point, and, and it gets glazed over, and every side has their point, but I got to emphasize, at what point does a child in a womb have a right? Where does that line come in? And that's not mentioned. So. Uh, as a man sitting there saying that, I, I, I had to speak out. Where do you think a womb, a child in a womb, their rights begin? That's a question to you I'd like you to answer. Yeah, my counter question would be how many people that are against this are actively advocating for more funding for comprehensive reproductive health for economic justice. So when we talk about human rights, while I believe in autonomy, I believe healthcare is a human right, reproductive healthcare is a human right, I would counter a question to you. What are you doing to ensure that the children you're saying you're advocating for have the resources that they need? Senator Rogers. I, I asked a specific pointed question uh, I understand you're running for office, and that's not why I asked you that question, but you're well polished on not answering the question when I tried to drill it down and be very specific and point on. Thank yeah, no, I'm bringing up that life uh, economic justice me, is a point. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry, but unless the senator is asking a question. Okay, I thought he, he wanted a follow-up. Nope, I thought he was poking I'm at sorry, a follow-up. So. Not in yeah. my committee. Yeah. Okay, very good. I think, oh, Senator De La Cruz. Um, I, yeah, there are a couple of things. Women do not spontaneously become pregnant. They have a choice. They make that choice. Um, if they spontaneously became pregnant and they weren't ready, then maybe there was a discussion to be had. You know, uh, then you might not be ready, you might not have the resources, but mm -hmm. women do not become spontaneously pregnant. They make a choice. And under the current law, we do provide abortions for women whose life is in danger, for instances of rape and incest. So we do provide coverage for women who um, are on Medicaid or state employees. We currently do that. Um, women do have rights. They have many rights in this state. And we also have choices. And when we're talking about providing elective abortions, that's where a lot of people have a problem and they do not want to pay for someone's elective abortion. They understand the life of the mother and the instance of rape or incest, but they do not want to pay for someone's elective abortion. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. 